received and supported by higher education, leadership academy of the Ministry of Education, Government of Malaysia. I warmly welcome all foreign delegates. I'm conscious some of you have had to travel a long distance to get here. I plead forgiveness for my shortcoming post, any shortcomings on our part. We hope you comfortably accommodated in the new return home, safe and sound. The multiversity project, which was initiated by Citizens International, is now 12 years old. Our first conference was held in 2002. Significantly, three of our last conferences including this one, have been supported by academic. Several well-known academics, including some white chancellors from several Malaysian and foreign universities have attended this meeting. The 2011 meeting was inaugurated by Dr. Saifuddin Abdullah, Deputy Minister of Education then. The 2013 conference was inaugurated by Dr. Sunin one former Secretary General of ASEAN. I'm extremely delighted to the present government with the being in the being inaugurated by <coughs> Professor Dato Dr. Asma uh, Dr. Asma Ismail um Narapathingi Pandidika. Two of the last conferences have actually now appeared in the proceedings books on the, uh, the issue. The first decolonizing university, published by U.S. Empress. The second, multicultural knowledge in the university, published by Citizens International and the Army Empress. These two volumes are now basic text for university academics and scholars who are seriously concerned with the issue that fall under these themes of diversity, learning and protest. <coughs> Decolonization of curricula taught an academic field. Well, there are many conferences supported by the Ministry of Education on several needed aspects of education, including evaluation, testing, quality control. Multi university conference supported by ACAP focused principally on opening up. Continuing dependence 
of our coursework that originated in the West, devaluing the potential of scholars from our own countries to generate course content using their own minds and experience. This dependence is rooted in feelings of inferiority among the academics in our part of this world. They appear to always submit to the alleged superior abilities of their Western counterparts. Even when it involves issues like knowledge of their own society in which they are living, of which they have experienced, and of which their Western counterparts have no clue. This time, this perceived superiority is challenged. Since it has no foundation in nature, we can deal with this pathology only by recognizing our own competence to generate theories and texts. This way, ACAP is to be again congratulated for being one of few educational again agencies in the world to host such debates. The narrow focus of academic disciplines is another concern. It produces deformed one-dimensional persons as it does not focus on the holistic development of people. The educational setting creates and promotes rivalry, disparity, inferiority, elitism, competitive status, unthinking individuals based on utilitarian principles. It de-skills people, creates false pride and focuses on meeting the target, watching exams, not on learning, acquiring knowledge. It also encourages parasitical and unthinking behavior. Further, education today also creates closed minds. The tendency is to reject challenges to accept notions and place it. For example, when the origins of science are rather historical truths, for granted is challenge, the immediate response is resistance. The system also instills seeds of hegemonic knowledge and hegemonic thinking for all the pretensions of developing critical minds. It, it does not create inquiring thinking, reflective or questioning minds. Creative or out of the box answers need to go marks or to failure in exams. <clears throat> the ultimate product of the education system is a person illiquid in many ways needed by our society. The system is keen to need to ensure he or she Equipped, trained in conventional world to fit into the industrial society, which is different from that required by the healthy society at large. Because of the emphasis and orientation of education to be an handmaiden of the economy, we find philosophy and faculty being closed down, no emphasis on literature. The teaching is based on the elimination or non recognition of indigenous knowledge and practice. The no same person of our society who want to encourage. A farmer's son cannot remain a farmer, an artisan son cannot continue as an artist. It does not encourage love for nature and animals. It produces people more suited to running nuclear plants or war machine. Present day universities bereft of spaces for creative work, poetry, drama, singing, and on work, hands on work, and, and have become atrophied in all these departments of human experience. They are done with extracurricular, this impoverished society in many ways. <coughs> Nowadays, children spend two years in preschool, six years in primary schools, four years high school, high school, high school three to eight years in university. Most children drop out of the high school without any specialized skill, 
your big state effect, offices, etc. For 12 to 20 years, the children are dependent, unproductive, and a burden on the parents and state. Compare this with the traditional system in which children begin to learn skills, agriculture, craft, business. Now, you should be in the age of 12. The disconnect between education and real life is an important factor contributing to joint frequency, drug addiction, crimes, and other suicides. It also leads to people who are alien, <coughs> insecure, who do not see their interconnected connectedness with one another, resulting in social problems, environmental degradation, and wastage. Besides in this traditional system, character development plays an important role, like, unlike the modern system where importance is given to exclusively the academic In the early years of child's education, emphasis was placed on instilling ethical, spiritual, and moral values. Finally, there is a need to question inherited and imposed the discipline may have been evolved in the societies of Europe in line with the demands of the evolution of the old societies. But the value and significance of these disciplines for our societies have never been evaluated or assessed. It may be possible that many of these disciplines have to be discarded and a new one may need to be created. For example, nothing depresses students more than the stuff they have to study in sociology or political science or even anthropology. And nothing excites them more than new challenges like environment, wildlife or nature, rehabilitation or uh, nature rehabilitation or climate change. However, the universities are those to change. University tried to bring these issues into the public arena in the past year. For one thing, being a small group, they have organized several international conferences bringing together scholars and academics from Asia, Africa, South America. All these conferences generated a very good energy and led to expansion of expansion of discussion of these issues among other groups. For example, we have since made the discussion of the decolonization issues in Iran, where the Iranian multiversity group organized four international meetings. And even in Turkey, many of the talks are now on the multiversity website, WW Multiversity Org. They are also available in TV multiversity. This diffusion and its result in the widespread discussion of the yeah, Agenda. It has been carried over into serious journals like the Economic and Political Weekly, Iran Media, publications of books in Malaysia and in India, etc. We have worked constructively designed non Eurocentric course. For example, we have successfully put together non Eurocentric course on the history and philosophy of science and on Indian philosophy. Some of these courses have been taught. A hundred percent decolonized course on history and philosophy of science was granted MPM clearance and taught. This pioneering work action of ministry need to be applauded in that <laughs> Publish the curriculum 
on these disciplines. Likewise, philosophy course was shared with Delhi University, professors at Delhi University professors, but not more effort was made to pursue its consideration by faculty there. These are our feelings, certain serious make up resources. Similarly, the work of John Brito at Al Bukhari University on grounding academic work on day to day life of Malaysian from home communities outside the university provide huge inspiration, excitement, orientation to students to transcend the narrow confines of conventional academic work, hitherto restricted only to books. We have two editors. Program, Yusuf Program, now working in Japan. Vinay Lal, a historian from India, now at USCLA, USA, who edited a series of booklets related to decolonization and gender. These books are widely available. <coughs> there is a multiversity brochure in Japan, which will provide further details of many of these activities and the scholars and institutions. Conference, we seek to link the decolonial Europe group and Southern Protectors, Australia, both of whom are represented here today. We warmly welcome them. And this linkage, multiversity themes, also themes around this network, work and We will get better at the recovery and we can have more meetings in common. We hope those of you who are keen to pursue these issues can meet this evening and tomorrow after dinner to discuss proposals for the further action on this agenda. However, we cannot go much beyond raising consciousness in the manner we have done in the past. We look forward to the Iranian group to arrange meetings with the Iranian education authorities. We will try similarly in India with the Malaysian Education Minister himself present today. Don't mean not present, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we anyway, plead for discussion on these pressing issues with the Malaysian Education Department as well. We need the support of all of you in this, in this audience for the this agenda. Finally, it may appear stage we have a multiversity meeting within the university. The multiversity project is meaningless without active linkage with the universities. Many universities are struggling to remain alive in the wake of large scale student disaffection in Cosmos, which appears alien and punishing, and whose relevance is known sometimes not even their own teachers. <coughs> universities admit that micro learning must be replaced by micro learning. Universities do not encourage micro learning, they cannot exit any other agencies and other societies. On the other conference. The ultimate and ultimate also, ultimate aim of multiversity is to liberate learning institutions to the being and slave to Western education. Western education may be important for the West. Though people like Mahatma Gandhi and Lord Leo Tolstoy disagreed with even that recommendation. Even if we allow this good for the West, we must examine whether it's good for us. The restlessness of students who are searching for more for some meaning after the involvement with the universities is not restricted to our countries alone. This form the equal measure in universities like Harvard or MIT. It is per pervasively felt among colleges and universities across European and Anglo Saxon world. The, del the deliberations of multiversity, therefore, do not focus only on the situation in which we find ourselves in our own countries. They are important to the students everywhere. <coughs> But in this multi-university conference, attempt to provide essential leadership, I'm thankful to Sean Passives, who 
warmly inviting us to this campus and Christian Union, the university provost, for enthusiastic in supporting this initiative. I'd like to thank Chancellor Sun Kimli for his unstinting commitment to carrying on of this initiative. Claude Alvarez, who despite his numerous other endeavors and environmental struggles in India, has been dedicated in advancing the Marquesai Biodiversity Initiative. Luke in fact, is Marquesai's best known brand, a known brand affair. I hope that he said we have fire and mission and also joyous. Common agreements and leave this shared agenda. This conference, in my own definition of how academics can do good work by moving on occasions outside the narrow concerns of their own discipline in the intense interest of knowledge, in order to re examine their involvement in the knowledge and to strive to ensure means it means something to those young men and women send to send for them for teaching, also developing a healthy 